Hey dudes, uh, Jason here with the next sort of step tutorial in Open Tunes. Um, it's been a really long day. It's been a bit of a bad one. So if that reflects in my voice, I apologize. I'm going to do my best to get through this particular tutorial. This is about the third time I'm recording it. Um, I am finding it quite frustrating at this point with just how intuitive the software is. Um, as positive as I have been trying to be, um, this really, like, the software really could use a lot of work, especially when it comes to some fairly major aspects of it, such as being able to save its scenes without losing information and being able to open set scenes on different computers. Um, so I'm in the process of trying to troubleshoot that. But for now, I just want to give you guys an idea of how to go about doing some actual animation in here. Um, and then the different layer types that we have available to us. Um, as well as how to go about then applying color to our files. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do to introduce the first kind of layer that we have available is I'm gonna right click in this empty frame here in column one and I'm going to say new level and I'm going to choose a raster level. All right, so that is nice and green, okay? And what this raster level means, um, let me just actually sort of just draw out the exercise that we're going to be doing. So what we're going to be doing is a very simple ball bounce. All right. Um, I'm just going to bounce up and down like so. Uh, so if that's frame one, we can just have that as frame. Let's have frame two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, whatever. All right. Um, so that's where we'll be doing our drawings there. Okay. Um, notice that then these drawings here, if I drag this out, right? So currently it's set to one frame. If I move down my timeline, it disappears. All right. If I grab this little gray box and I drag it down to about 12 frames long, what I've essentially said is that this frame is going to hold, this image is going to hold for 12 frames. All right, so I'm not extending saying that this is now the workspace for the frame. I'm saying that it is being held. I do also then have access to this little drop down here to bring the opacity down. And this opacity allows me to set this essentially as a guide layer. All right, so I can then lock that and I don't need to worry about accidentally messing it up. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is in my next column, I'm gonna right click and say new level and I'm gonna set this to a vector level. All right, you'll see a vector levels are now gold and they behave slightly differently. All right, so on a vector level, if I um, click and draw something like so, it kind of gets smoothed out for me. All right, and this can be affected if I use my accuracy. All right, if my accuracy is set to one, right, whatever I draw, it is going to try and smooth it out for me as best as it possibly can. All right, so it takes a bit of control away from you, but it does allow a little bit more smoothing. If I then bring that accuracy uh, up to 100%, whatever I draw is essentially what I get. All right, so that is a, a tool there that you guys can sort of take advantage of. You'll also notice that with my brush tool, I've got size min and max, all right? And if I push these numbers up, so if I make my max there and my, my sort of min there, that just means that at my lightest push, that is how thick the line will be, and then the harder I push, the thicker it will get. All right, so it actually then it gives you a little bit more control over um, the thickness of your brush at any given time, which I think is actually pretty cool. All right, um, so for this, I'm actually just gonna bring this down to about this size. Okay, so on my uh, sort of first level over here, I'm going to draw a circle. All right, so I'm actually gonna make this a lot smaller like so. All right, so there is my first circle. I'm then just gonna hit my arrow key to move down. You'll notice that my circle disappears. All right, so that's obviously not conducive for an animation. So what I can do is I can right click in my viewer, undo that. I can right click and I can say activate onion skin, or I can double click this icon over here. All right, so you'll see then that this is our onion skin icon. These little three red dots show the information behind or previous to our current frame. I can turn as many of those on as I would like. I can also turn on green ones, which projects information forwards. So if I had a keyframe on frame 12, and I set all these points forward, I would then see that information in green as I moved. All right, so 
I'm just going to then uh, work my way down, do a little bit of um, animation here. So ball, ball, ball. And as I start moving down, obviously our ball is going to start to elongate. Um, should try a little bit harder to maintain my volume, but oh well, something like that. Um, and yeah, so we'll just call it a 10. All right, so I can sort of run th run through that. I can double click this to turn off my onion skinning. Um, and that then allows me to sort of play back through this. Okay, so now that I've done this, if I wanted to be lazy, right, what I could do um, is I'm actually just going to get rid of these things here or not because it doesn't want to let me actually get rid of these frames which is also something that is very frustrating but anyway if i wanted this ball to now bounce back up right uh, uh something also just to draw to your attention we've got our level strip here the level strip gives us a clear idea of where these drawings are and how they go about actually affecting um or how they change right so i can actually see the change in my assets without having to scrub through frame by frame all right, so if I wanted to then copy paste these frames, so control C, control V, I could then paste them in ascending order and my ball would essentially create the illusion that it is bouncing back up again. All right, so if I didn't want to animate the full cycle myself, um, just make sure I'm not copying and pasting duplicates. Go away. I'm Shh. Shut your whole mouth. Um, there we go. Okay. So now that I've done this, it'll um, sort of bounce down and bounce back up again. But I need to extend the length of my viewing area, which is what I use this little tab over there for and this little tab over there for to make sure then that this between these blue numbers is what is going to play back. So I can do that. I can actually turn this layer off and then we've got, I've got a ball that's kind of bouncing up and down. Okay, so with this now done, I can actually introduce you to um, a couple of different coloring methods, all right? And the first thing that I want to introduce is the actual color methods that we currently have when we create our frames. We'll always have a color zero and a color one. Now, color one essentially is what is applied to all my different frames, all right? Notice that as soon as I try to change color one, it actually changes the color of my outlines, all right? Um, color zero is essentially my reset tool. So if I apply a fill to this, which I'll do in a moment that I then don't like, the easiest way to get rid of it is to essentially paste this alpha information in its place. All right. Okay. So paint bucket tool, it has got a couple of different settings and I'll walk you through them now. So I'm going to right click in this area and I'm going to say new style. This is going to allow me to create a different color, do like a nice green. Um, and with my paint bucket tool selected, I've got a couple of options, right? The first is how we go about applying that information. Normal means I simply click and it fills the area. Rectangular means I can click and drag, right? I don't know if you can actually see, but I get like a little bounding box around it. Uh, I also have freehand and then I also have polyline. Now polyline, I have to double click in order to close my selection, but there we go. All right. We also then have the mode. All right. So areas means it's going to fill in what's inside the circle. All right. If I were to set it to lines and areas, okay, um, I actually then need to have a different type selected in order to apply that. All right. So essentially, my selection needs to overlap uh, the outline and the interior for lines and areas in order to do that. If I wanted to do just lines, I could then also click and drag to select that. Okay, so that's how we could go about changing our colors. All right. However, if I were to have um, a shape that was not closed, so let's say something like that, obviously my paint bucket tool is not going to work for that. All right. In order to fix that, I would either need to grab my brush and close the shape. Okay, let me just use the right color for that. Uh, I would need to close the shape and then I could fill it. Um, if I actually set it back to normal again, 
There we go. Alternatively, what I could also do, because we're working on a vector layer, these lines are actually still being sort of set up mathematically, which means that if I use this uh, control point editor tool and I select this point, I can actually adjust the path that this line follows, all right, which is fantastic uh, because it means I don't have to consistently keep uh, drawing, erasing, drawing, erasing if I'm not happy with the way um, that a shape is moving. All right. And then with my tool selected, there we go. All right. Um, so one thing that we can't do on a vector layer, however, is I can't use a freehand brush tool. All right. Wow, this is kind of frustrating to use, actually. It would be great if it wasn't, but it is. Um, okay. So on a vector layer, I can't do any freehand painting unless I use my, let's call this the generation brush tool. All right, this is what I use to create my lines. This is what I would use to sort of fill or to paint in. However, I can't do that on a vector level. I can do that on a raster level, however. All right, so if I were to just quickly adjust the side, this is something else that could really do with some fixing. Right, so let me just adjust. Oh, Christ. I'm not starting this tutorial over again. All right, there we go. And here we are. Now, with this um, layer selected, okay, I can obviously adjust the color as I see fit. And I can actually paint essentially freehand as much as I would like. So if I were to drag this all the way to the top, like so, you'll see then that our paint is now filling in the line behind it. All right. If I want to get rid of that, my eraser tool. All right. Again, this will have a different type. I can decrease the size of that. Um, and I can actually then use this eraser tool to get rid of the paint. Right, and I can set it lines, modes, or areas. So if I only want the areas, this will get rid of that. But if I do have any lines drawn, you can obviously set it to lines as well, erase that, etc. All right, so I've only got sort of access to this coloring method if I do it on a raster layer. Okay, and then I can do that as I see fit. I would then just need to generate multiple versions. Right, which obviously makes coloring a lot easier if I just do it on the actual vector layer. Okay, so that is just a basic introduction to animating and rend uh, not rendering, animating and applying color. Um, I'm still sorting out the kinks on this, so I apologize. If you hated the video, by all means, let me know in the comments below. I probably won't record it. I'm really hot full of this at the moment. Um, but there are other tutorials out there that you're welcome to go and find. Um, but yeah, I'll probably see you guys in the next time. Sorry for the bitchy mood and have a great day further. Ciao.